Okay, so we are here outside of the Claremont Movie Theater dun, 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 with uh, Jonathan, and I'm not sure if I know how to pronounce your last name. Is it uh, Bewley? Bewley. Bewley, okay. Jonathan Bewley, he's a jazz drummer, also a photographer, and he also does some uh, video editing and stuff. So this is basically for the uh, Starcross documentary. You're the, you know, second interview, second victim. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, I uh, just wanted to know um, how you and I met. Gosh, I can't even remember yesterday. Uh, let's see if I can I can do this. Uh, well, I remember uh, meeting you through Robert. Through Robert, yeah. Uh, you, we kind of lived on opposite ends of, of the same street, and I would come over, and Starcross would be rehearsing. Um, and uh, so, you know, it, it was pretty cool because the, I got to see the band go through a lot of transitions and a lot of members. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of members, uh, but uh, I do remember um, that the band always had a, a like a distinctive sound, and I kind of thought that that came from you. Yeah, uh, because it always. Well, me and Robert always like wrote different styles of songs, but they always seemed to blend well together. Right. Right. And that's like one of the things we, we definitely miss in the band is like having Robert's, you know, guitar style and his songs. Robert would, would turn into a man on the moon if he could at this point. But, uh, <laughs> he attempts serious. Um, so, so we met over at your place during rehearsals. And, okay. And then we uh, hung out from there. Right on. And Jonathan, what is one of your favorite memories of the band? It could either be... Um, you know, when you came over for a practice, or when you played drums for us at one of our parties, or, you know, even just like, you know, watching us film one of our videos or the show. Uh, one of my favorite memories of playing with the band was actually doing the song that's, um, was it Cold Creeping In? Yeah, yeah, the one we have for the Starbucks contest. For the Starbucks contest, because uh, I've been sort of like bogged down with, with work and then you called and said, hey, we've got this song and you know, we'd like to sort of add some drums onto the live uh, to add a kind of energy thing to it. And uh, we got that done all in a, what, an evening. Um, I'd never heard the song before, uh, but managed to find some of the right parts to it. And um, it worked out really nicely. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I think it sounds really good for you know being recorded at a house. <laughs> yeah, it was all done in in, in uh, Mark Kemmerly's uh, recording room, which is like a little, it's like a music room, but it has mirrors on the wall, and there's nothing about it that really is like studio esque. Uh, uh, so that was a really fun uh, day, and it's a great song too. Vote for Starcrossed. <laughs> <laughs> So do you think that uh, Starcrossed has a future in the music industry? Uh, I do. Uh, unlike a lot of other bands that we <laughs> kind of know about, I think Starcrossed uh, does have a future because uh, it's a band that has a really identifiable sound. Yeah. And uh, I think that comes from the lyrics, it comes from Mark's guitar, the sound of the guitar and the structure of the songs. Uh, but now with Christina singing, I think that element is really sort of gelled the sound. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of like the direction we want to go in is to have her sing more and me just like concentrate on the song structure. It, you know, it, it kind of almost reminds me uh, in a way of like a, a, a nice sound from the 90s, but then there's kind of a modern element to it too. And, um, you know, whether the music is sort of stripped down you know, they're just two people playing acoustic or a full band, it still sounds like Starcross stuff. Yeah. Uh, the thing I don't like about some other bands is that they, they're they not really good at songwriting, and that's always been a kind of a strength, I think, with Starcross, is good cool. songwriting. So, uh, what was it like to, to play with Robert when I moved out of town to Virginia? Um, playing with Robert was interesting because he probably has the quietest voice. I mean, Robert has like two dynamics. Either he's screaming or he's quiet. Or he sounds like Billy Corgan and he's whispering. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he's, he's, so when he's really quiet, it's like, it's really hard. I don't know if I ever was able to do justice to his music because um, 
I think basically Robert likes playing, you know, delicate kind of acoustic music. And, yeah. And drums are loud. I mean, even if you play them with brushes, if you play a beat, it's going to sort of set the tone. So, um, you know, I enjoy Robert's music, but I, I, unless he's going crazy and screaming, I, I, I think that drums are not part of the picture. <laughs> Well, he actually did that like electronic project, and that sounds really cool. I think. Yeah, that took a few years off his lifespan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I just wanted to add something about bands in San Diego, if I, if I could. Yeah, go for it. Because I was thinking about this, you know, you taping this, and I think it's really hard in San Diego because uh, there are so few venues, and for for bands, it's kind of difficult. I don't. I don't really think that there's too few venues. It's just they cater to certain types of music or bands that have already played there. Because I've noticed, like when I try to get shows at like the Ken Club or Casbah or like any of those places, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll be able to get a show and we won't have anyone show up, or we just keep trying and, and we never get to play there. Especially the Casbah. I've been working on them for a couple years and you know, still no luck, but. You know, if this House of Blues things works out, maybe it'll give us a push in the right direction. It's kind of more corporate now, I think, is basically... Because I talked to people that that sort of were talking about the, the better days of music for San Diego in the 90s. And if anything, I think it, it kind of has to do with, like, everyone's on their computer and everyone's, you know, sort of mobile now. And so seeing live music is not as much... A, a big thing. It takes a lot to get people out in this town, I think. Yeah. It takes a lot to get people out to come see your Get people off my space and go meet real people in the real world. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's, in that way it, it's, it's kind of tough, but I hope that Sarcross wins the uh, contest and, and gets a really good push from it. So. Well, thank you for your time, Jonathan, and uh, you know, best okay. endeavors and all that you do. All right, thanks. All right, cheers. film this.